Good afternoon, Christine. I can more or less guarantee that you are always the first person to log on. And it's lovely to see you. Hope you're okay. <coughs> Hi, Natasha. Hope everybody's okay. I'm fine, thank you, Christine. It's um, it's nice and warm in my craft room, so that's um, that's good for me. It's cold outside though today. It's a cold wind today. Oh hi, Claire. How are you? Puppy behaving herself. <coughs> I think we'll uh, we we'll just give it a two or three minutes and then just see who else joins us and then we'll get stuck in because it's uh, I wouldn't say it's a difficult card to make. Hi Anne. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not a difficult card to make. It's just a little bit fiddly, but I I love the edge cuts um, essential edges dies. And I don't use them um, nearly enough, so I thought I'd use them in the week for something else. So I thought I'd I'd give it a go. I also use them on one of my animal cards that um, Lisa had on the TV the other week. I did a swan, which wasn't shown on the television, but I did put a picture in the group, and the water was made out of one of the edge cuts essential edges, and uh, little reeds. I used the grasses off the poppy dies so you know everything else was um I, I just thought why not use them um for another card so that's what i'm doing today so let's get stuck in let's get stuck in and then um, we'll see how long it takes us like i say not difficult just a little bit fiddly so what am i going to be using my main die for the card is the slimline inverted scalloped frame okay and that's this one here and I liked the scallops on here I just thought it gave it a little bit of a as though you were looking into a window so that's why I've used that one but then when I came to do the background I needed something to stick all these pieces to and I, I couldn't stick it to the card because um, I needed to cut off pieces on the edge and I couldn't stick it to the back of this frame because that was just far too fiddly I did try but it was just a nightmare so what I did I used the outside frame of the slimline cracked frame dies because it sits beautifully behind the scalloped frame and you can't see it but it's the perfect size to stick all my pieces to in the background. And then I've also used the um, butterfly edge cuts die, which was one of Lisa's first dies that she bought out. Um, I haven't got the product packaging for that. Um, I don't know why, but I used this last week on my live and I just wanted to show you a different way of using it because I'd got several cut out and I didn't want it to get bent up and not used so I thought I'd use it today and I just think it makes like um like a window onto the world if you like so that's the basis of my card and I've done all the die cutting and all the stamping and everything because the time that it's going to take will be to put the actual background together so I didn't want to I didn't want to waste any time cutting and um cutting and stamping today because you all know how to do that anyway so those are the two main dies that I've used. And then, like I said, I've also used the essential edges. And those are for my fields and my clouds in the background. Okay, so those are the three main dies that I've, die sets that I've used today. I've used a couple of others, but I'll come to those later. So, first thing I did was I glued my butterfly edge cuts to my scalloped frame 
because I, I wanted that to be properly dry before I started today and I wanted to be able to know that it was going to stick down and this wasn't going to be a problem so that's why I've already done that but it, it's so easy to cut out I mean I showed you last week how to cut it out um, it, it's a fabulous die set and it, it, as I say it's one of Lisa's first ones um, and I think this was the first on a long road to um, absolute fabulousness so there we go now the, the butterfly flourish die is um, in stock at the moment as are everything else that I'm using today everything's in stock the inverted scallop die set has got a couple of pound off at the moment so that's only 19.99 at the moment um, and there's there's a few in stock for that and the essential edges and um, there's 16.99 there's six dies in there and again good stock levels for that two other things that I'm using but as I said I'll come to those in a minute so I'll put my card blank and my frame just to one side and I will show you how I'm going to stick down all my pieces and I'll leave my card standing up there so that I can see what I'm doing now I've laid these out already so that I know more or less where I'm going with putting them down on the card now you'll see that I've I've used the dies and I've just cut them out of blue card and green card and then what I've done I've brushed the edges um, with some distress oxides and I used broken china for the sky and the newer rustic wilderness for the hills and I just think it, it gives the the pieces a little bit of definition um, and just gives a little bit of life to your to your picture. Um, I don't know whether I've missed any comments. Yes, it's nice to see you, Clay. You don't get a chance very often, do you? Um, it is nice to see you. Hi, Heidi. I won't tell anybody you're watching me, I promise. Right. So, because I've said this is the this is the tricky bit, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get right on in and and start this. Now you'll see on the original there are some little pieces of white card in the background. I didn't really want that so I'm going to try and avoid that today if I can. And the first pieces that I'm going to just put down are just the top. I know you're not going to know you're not going to see all these clouds properly but I want them to cover the back of the card and just to make sure that when I put my frame down that's exactly what they do. That's perfect. You see, you can't really see the, the dark blue that I've put on the edges. But if I bring it down so that you can, you can see white card in the background. And I don't really want that. So I'm going to just push those back up to the top. And then I'm just going to start and glue them down. So I'm going to glue this one down first. Just leaving that one in place. And really, th this is as difficult as it gets. I mean, it, it is purely um, die cutting and piecing it back together so sort of like um, a jigsaw puzzle in card if you like thank you Heidi it's um it's a little a little technique that one of my friends taught me and I just think it's if you just drag the sponge down across the edge it leaves the darker bit at the top and then just fades down into the die cut and I just think it's it just gives it a little bit more realism if you like now you'll see that when i'm adding these onto the card that they are hanging over the edge that's not going to be a problem because that's why i'm using this this um frame because then i'm going to when i've finished i'm just going to go across and trim off all the edges of my die cuts so that they fit the frame I'm just put that down. I'm just going to push that up a little bit. I've got a little bit of white card there, but I don't think you're going to. Don't think you're going to really notice it. So I'm happy with that. The only trouble with this glue is, whilst it gives you a little bit of time to manoeuvre, once it's stuck, <laughs> it's stuck. So now it's just a case of adding all your bits on until you're sort of halfway down the card with your sky and then 
starting with your hills and it's it's purely artistic license as to where you place them how you place them as long as you're going across your card and you've got no gaps no bits of white card showing then that's all good so you see here there's like a, an edge piece well i don't want that showing as an edge so i'm just going to tip that slightly so that it's i've got clouds here but you can't see any any um straight edges it'll all be hidden and then you'll just see beautiful fluffy little white clouds or yellow cloud blue cloud yellow where did that come from um blue clouds on your card so just work your way down making sure that they're all stuck as you're going because you don't want anything to pop loose So it's quite a bit of, it's quite. A, I suppose there's quite a bit of waste, but you could always save the little offcuts and use them on another project because they'll always come in handy because you'll always get little gaps where you want to fill something in. So you can always use those little pieces that you cut off. So nothing, nothing really goes to waste. And these edge cuts, these essential edges, have been out for quite a while now. Um, and I just think they're, they're some of the most useful, but um, not, not ignored, but it, it, they're, not, they're not something that we, we sort of mention a lot. Um, and I think we do them an injustice because they are so useful um, for so many different projects. And projects that you wouldn't normally use them for if you if you know what I mean so it's sort of like a, a case of think outside the box um, and I'll leave it there I'm not going to use the last one I don't think I've obviously done it different to the way I laid it out yesterday because I used all of those yesterday now this piece at the front what I'm actually going to do with this is I'm going to glue it into place on the back of my frame because I actually want that in a specific place and then I can use my other pieces to add my hills exactly where I want them but you see there I want that dip to just appear so that you can just see it so can you see that if you look beyond the scallop and behind the butterfly you can actually see a piece of hill all the way along and that's what I want on this. So in order to make sure that, that I achieve that, I'm actually going to stick this to the back of the frame. And when I was looking at putting this together yesterday, I um, I was going to do it all along the back of the frame. But to be honest, I was making that much work for myself. And I thought, <laughs> it's not going to work. It's not it was finding an easy way of adding the sky and the grass and whatever without making it too difficult because nobody wants difficult when they're card making especially if you've got a lot to do so i'm just going to add that on the back there and all this will be held in place so don't worry about it too much you just want to be able to add it so that you've got exactly what you want there you go so now i've got my little hill let's get rid of that bit of glue right behind my scallop and you can just see the outline of the hill behind those butterflies which is what i wanted so i'm just going to move that to one side while that glue dries and then i'm going to carry on with this grass here now they all look weird and wonderful shapes but um that that's just the way i've i've cut them on the card and really it's just a case of placing your dies on your card and cutting just cutting lines and then trimming them down to size afterwards um so don't worry about what they look like what shapes they look like because it'll all come it'll all come good in the end so i'm just going to place these down because I just want to make sure that 
they're all going to go in the right place where I want them to go. I want that one at the back. And then that one there. See, I've done it different again today as to how I did it yesterday. And then when I place that one on top, that one will, will appear in front of all the others, which is exactly what I want. I like that. So I'm just going to fold those down and then I can glue these in place. And like I said, don't worry about them hanging off the edge because we're going to trim it off in a minute anyway. So your hills are now appearing in front of your clouds. And I just think the effect that this gives... I think it's just really really lovely just like a little window onto the world I'd love to be out walking along hills and in some nice warm sunshine wouldn't you Natasha yours are always very different to mine um, I mean I, I love how you use colour and think if I tried to do some of the things that you did with with your projects mine would just look a mess yours look amazing um i think it, it's horses for courses everybody's got their own little style and their own way of doing things um and i think sometimes it would be nice to have a go at what other people do um like i did have a go at claire's uh, glasses project that she did the other day and I really enjoyed doing it, if I'm honest. It was it was one of those, I've got to do it now, because if I don't do it now, I won't do it. Um, but I, I really enjoyed doing it. I thought it was just such a fun little project to do. It was, it was amazing. So thanks for that, Claire. Really enjoyed that. I always panic when people say, oh, I'm going to give you a little challenge, like that lovely Lisa Robson does, you know. But if you don't challenge yourself now and again and do things that are a little bit out of your comfort zone, then you'll never you'll never experience anything any different, will you? So so those are all my pieces, and then when I put my other piece on the front here, that will hide the other little bit of white that I'd still got on that card. Perfect. I like that. So now all I'm going to do is just go around the edge of this die cut and trim off all those extra little pieces. There's a bit of glue on that, but I just have to remember to clean my scissors afterwards, otherwise they'll be sticking to everything. Okay. This has taken me, really, not anywhere near as much time as I thought it would. But I didn't want to, I didn't want to push the time because I, I was conscious of how long it could have taken. So um, I'll just get rid of these bits. Okay, so there's my background and that is going to sit over the top of that little background there. And it will all sit in the right place. Obviously, this little frame, because it's only a frame you're going to have to mess around with the top bit to make sure it sits in the right place. I've actually probably not trimmed that properly. Missed that little bit. But when you add the frame on the front, I just think it's I just think it's a fab little project. And it does look like a little window onto the world, doesn't it? So now I'm going to add this frame to this die cut. I'm going to fiddle around with that because I want it to sit just right. And as I said to you, this is the this is the hardest part of making a card like this is getting it to all line up and sit in the right place so that there's no little gaps where you don't want them to be. So bear with me while I fiddle around with this little frame 
just make sure I've got enough glue to make sure that it sits in the right place. I'm going to turn it upside down. Excuse if you can see my head, I do apologise. My lockdown rubbish haircut. Right, so I've lined the bottom up. So hopefully you can't see any of the bits at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is just push that to the top. And make it sit in place. Now, if you can see a bit at the top, which obviously you can here, what you can do is go along and just trim it off if you want to, which is what I'm going to do. I mean, when I did the original, um, I didn't do it like this. I actually did stick it to a piece of card. Just I just cut a piece of card. But to be honest, I wanted it to be an exact size. Um, yesterday when I did this sample, I didn't have to trim anything off like this. But obviously, I'm doing the live, so it's bound to go wrong, isn't it? But I think it's worth taking a little bit of time and making sure I've got mermaid tails in there. And I haven't used mermaid tails. Just taking a little bit of time making sure that it all sits where it should do. Okay. And then that's going to go onto my card blank at the back here. Like that. So I'll put that on first and then I've just got a couple of extra little pieces to add on. Um, I think sometimes it's worth just having a play um, and, and just seeing what you can come up with because it's it, it's quite exciting to try something a little bit different. That's why I gave Claire's card a go because I mean, she's very good at explaining stuff um, and my measurements weren't exactly 100% when I came to actually put the glass onto the onto the background but I don't think you could tell so she's quite right when she says there's always there's always a way of disguising a happy accident because we don't make mistakes crafters don't make mistakes they just have happy accidents that mean your end project looks a little bit different to what you think it's going to look like Oh, Natasha, I'm dead jealous. I can't go till April. 13th of April, I'm booked in at half past nine. I can't go till then. I'm really, really, really want my hair cut. Right, so the last two little bits are my sentiment and my little trees. Now, these little trees aren't really trees. Because Lisa hasn't got any tree dyes, really. Um, or stamps other than probably the Christmas tree on the Christmas Essentials set so I wanted to put trees on here but I wanted obviously to use Lisa's products so I've had a look through all my dies and all my stamps and I came up with this so this is the set that I've used I haven't used the stamp I've just used the die that goes with this little stamp so this is the die here and that's what it gives you, a little tree. And I just think that's perfect because it's not meant to be a tree. But when you put it on the card here, they look like trees, don't you think? And I just think that gives the perfect finishing touch to a lovely little card that looks as though it's looking out of a window over some hills and beautiful sky so i just thought that was really cute so you see just goes to show if you look at, through your stamps and your dies that you've already got you don't have to use them for what they were meant to be used for and i know when we first started doing lives i know claire used some of the little extra stamps that were in one of the sets and did something completely different with it um Obviously that video is on YouTube and it's one of the very one of the very first um, lives that Claire did, I think. But it was such a clever idea because she didn't use the stamp for what the stamp was meant to be. So 
it's worth going back through the archives on YouTube and just having a look at some of the earlier stuff um, you know that that was made with products that Lisa bought out right at the beginning clever isn't it Anne <laughs> I just I as soon as I saw it I thought oh tree so yeah just goes to show Lisa's bought out stuff that she doesn't even know about she's got trees and nobody knew does look cute doesn't it Claire I think it does I'm really pleased with it this wasn't what I was planning at all I was planning something completely different um, and, and I don't know what changed my mind but all of a sudden I just thought oh I know essential edges why not use essential edges what can I do and that's what I came up with I was going to colour the butterflies um, but I don't know I think they look better just left white um, I mean what colour would I have done them if I was going to colour them because I didn't want to detract from the background so that's the other reason I left them white quite Tuscan well I wouldn't know Claire because I've never been to Tuscany so um, I think I know what you mean but I mean, what's the name of those really tall thin trees that you see everywhere not alders are they yeah I thought leave them white to be honest Um I, I just think I don't know I, I just think it's white suits the card I think so there you go there's my and I know why I've had to trim stuff off here because I didn't actually line this frame up with my background very well so that's why I've had to trim the top but if you do it properly like what I haven't um, then yours should look right and I think it's I think you'll agree I hope you'll agree that it's it's worth taking a little bit of time to think of something a little bit different um, so that was the die that I used not the stamp I was going to stamp it and then I thought no it won't look like a tree then so that's why I decided not to and then my sentiment came from the essential words um, stamp and die set such a useful die set these are and um, there is only three in stock at the moment and at the moment they are 17.99 which is 12 pound off that is a really really good price so if you haven't got those i really would consider um treating yourself because they're a, a useful set of dies and stamps to have always coming useful um cypress trees that's it yeah you're right claire that yeah totally agree totally agree right so one last couple of couple of things just before i go don't forget the bingo challenge runs till the end of the month and again my card will fit the bingo challenge and it will fit this line here the die cut the sentiment and the stamp because i've stamped the sentiment and die cut it out <laughs> i think that's really clever um so yeah and then our lovely Lisa is on TV next week. Now, if you've seen the event banner that I've put in the group, I've had to edit it this morning because we've had a little bit of a um, change of times and things. Lisa's doing another Facebook Live on Wednesday evening. It's the 24th at 4 o'clock. And if you caught the last one, you'll know how good it was. So if you can watch it, I would because I just, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. It was the best two hours I'd spent for a long time. I really enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> thanks, Anne. Um, so, yeah, Facebook Live on the Wednesday evening at four o'clock. And then on Thursday evening at six o'clock, she will be doing a sort of sneak peek of what's coming up on the Friday. And then there were three shows on the Friday. And this is all of making sure, of course, that there are plenty of stocks. I know Lisa's got big stocks of what's coming up next week. But thinking about how shows have gone in the past, all I'm going to say is when you see what Lisa's bringing you, make sure you're in at the start because I have a sneaky feeling that 
these are going to fly. So Facebook Live on Wednesday, four o'clock. I'm assuming it's two hours like the last one. Six o'clock on the Thursday evening for um, sort of like a sneak peek of what's coming up on the Friday. And then three shows on the Friday starting at 7.15, following on at eight o'clock. So a double show in the morning. And then, <coughs> excuse me, three o'clock in the afternoon, providing that there are stocks left. Um, and like I say, make sure you're there at the start because you're not going to want to miss this. It's amazing. Trust me. So I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, Claire will be back with you on Tuesday. We've got the lovely Natasha with us on Wednesday evening. And then I'll be back with you next Friday. And it will be something completely different to this. I've already got an idea of what I'm doing next week, which isn't like me because I usually have to wait till Wednesday to get some inspiration. But forward thinking. It's my watchword for 2021, forward thinking. So there we go. Two cards, all die cut except the stamp for the sentiment. Have a fabulous weekend. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, make sure you don't miss Lisa's live on Monday where she'll be doing a quick show preview for next week's shows as well. That will be on Lisa's page and we will share it into the group so you don't miss anything. So have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.